Hello beautiful people. Today we're talking about the planet that makes hell look like a day spa, Venus. With renewed interest in Venus and space agencies around the world, including the United States, working on new Venus probes and landers, it's the perfect time to ask, what makes this planet so mysterious, so deadly, and so underrated? But before we get into the clouds of sulfuric acid and pressure that could crush a submarine, let's start with a rare moment in space history when the Soviet Union straight up kicked America's space butt. While the US was playing lunar leapfrog, the Soviets were doing something even wilder. They were building probes tough enough to land on Venus, a place hot enough to melt lead, and with atmospheric pressure like the bottom of Earth's oceans. It was called the Venera program, and between the 60s and the 80s, they launched a fleet of metallic warriors. Most of them were torn apart by Venus's unforgiving grip, but then, in 1975, Venera 9, this absolute unit of a probe, landed. It survived for 53 minutes and it sent back the first images, pictured here, from the surface of another planet. So let me say that again, these were the first surface photos of another planet ever taken by the USSR. So take a bow, Venera, because you earned it. And that Soviet hardware may have been a pile of steel bolts, but for a moment it was the toughest thing in the solar system. And the Venera line didn't stop there. The Venera 13 and Venera 14 followed in the early 80s, surviving for over an hour each on the surface. Venera 13 even managed to record color images and audio. Yes, the actual sound from the surface of Venus. What did it sound like? Well, just a lot of wind. But hey, space wind. So how did the rest of the world do on Venus back then? Well, the US took its best shot with Pioneer Venus which dropped several atmospheric probes in 1978. And while they did collect a lot of data on their way down, none of them lasted more than an hour on the surface and no cameras. One did hang on for a miraculous 67 minutes though, which is pretty dang good. Europa's best entry came with ESA's Venus Express, which orbited from 2006 to 2014, and it never landed and perhaps that was a good idea. It gave us a lot of atmospheric insight there. And Japan, they had a rough start, missing their orbital insertion in 2010, but in true comeback fashion, they swung around and entered orbit in 2015. Um, I didn't try to pronounce it because I'm not that good at Japanese, so I will just put it up on the screen. And it's given us some amazing data about Venusian weather, but again, no lander. So when it comes to surviving the surface, the Soviets are still the undefeated champs. Nobody else has dared to land there since, and Venus is like the solar system's final boss. The Venera probes were the only ones that made it through the cutscene. Now the baton is being passed on again, and NASA's Da Vinci mission is scheduled to launch in the next few years. And it's going to dive straight into Venus's atmosphere like a scientific cannonball. So this mission aims to measure the chemistry of the clouds, the structure of the atmosphere, and even get photos during its descent. So think of it as a 21st century remix of Venera. And I will be getting more into the Da Vinci mission specifically later on in a different video. Let's talk about the big three, Earth, Mars, and Venus. These are like the three bears of the atmospheric fairy tale. Mars is too thin, almost no atmosphere, practically naked. Earth is just right, a breathable balanced mix that keeps water flowing and life living. And Venus is way too thick. Imagine wrapping the planet in 90 times Earth's pressure. It's a slow cooker with lightning. And it gets even juicier when you compare their chemistry. Earth's air is about 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. Mars is about 95% carbon dioxide, but way too thin to actually trap any heat. Venus is also 96% carbon dioxide, but insanely dense, and that's why it's hotter than Mercury, even though it's further from the sun. So this is what we call a runaway greenhouse effect, where heat gets trapped and stays trapped, turning the planet into a pressure-cooked inferno. And don't worry, we're not going to get political here, but scientists study Venus because it shows us what can happen when CO2 builds up out of control. It's like looking into a cracked crystal ball and seeing what not to do. And this is where the old saying comes in. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Makes sense when you think about it. Mars is cold, barren, and kind of lonely. Venus, full of mystery, complexity, danger, and beauty. Handle with care. So here's where things get weird in the best way. Up in the clouds, about 55 kilometers high, Venus becomes kind of livable. The temperature's about 30 degrees Celsius, or about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure is almost Earth normal. Radiation is still blocked by some thick clouds up there, 
So some scientists think life could exist there. Maybe tiny microbial organisms floating in acidic droplets, surviving on sulfur compounds. It's not confirmed, but it's not totally crazy either. And, and there's this idea of making floating cities. Real proposals have been made to build habitats that hover in Venus's atmosphere like sci-fi cruise ships. They'd float because the atmosphere is so thick. Breathable air is literally a lifting gas on Venus. So it's like something straight out of Bioshock or Cloud City, and with Earth getting weirder, it doesn't hurt to dream a little bit. Now, for all of Venus's drama, it's still not the biggest diva in the solar system. That crown goes to Jupiter. And Jupiter's atmosphere makes Venus look like a lightweight. I mean, we're talking metallic hydrogen, thousand mile storms and wind speeds faster than category five hurricanes on Monster Energy. And if Venus is a pressure cooker, Jupiter is a blender with the lid off. So yeah, Venus is terrifying, beautiful, misunderstood, and deadly, but also kind of inspiring. Well, thanks for tuning in today, guys. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more weird and wonderful journeys through outer space. And I hope you learned something new today, and I hope you learn something new each and every day.